Welcome to Mini Moderns. My name's Simone and thank you for joining me on my tiny corner on a miniature interweb where we're here to think big and build small. So let's get into it. So today I want to show you how to make a reusable fold away mock-up room or prototype room if that's what you want to call it. So if you remember the first video I made on this channel it was how to make a mock-up reusable room with removable curtains. I'll leave a link in the description for that video. So let's call this the 2.0 version of that video where we're going to step it up a notch. I've kind of learnt my craft a little bit more. I think this video might be my like first year in miniatures. So I'm really, really thrilled to be part of this community and, and doing miniatures and being able to show things that I've kind of learned along the way. So in this video, we're gonna be making removable curtains part two. I'm gonna show you how to make a removable window, removable floors, walls, ceilings, removable wallpaper and flooring or using stuff that you can generally find around your house. I will leave a link in the description for everything that I'm gonna be using for this project, but it's the perfect way to create stuff. If you're not quite ready to make a full dollhouse yet, this is the perfect way to get your mock-up and your prototypes together and change the room anytime you want. So if you want a living room today, cool have a living room or if you want a kitchen or a bedroom this is the perfect way to test your ideas without having to have a million rooms around so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do comment down below and let me know any thoughts and suggestions that you may have yourself and if you get any value out of this please let your girl know Let's get into it. So before we get started, I'm gonna show you a quick example of how I actually connect my room using some foam board and some tiny little magnets. I'm gonna use foam boards for this demonstration, but this can be done with wood or cardboard or your chosen room box material. So to make this foldable and removable, we're gonna use these magnets. I will leave a link in the description for everything that I'm gonna be using. You simply just push into the foam board or if you're using wood, drill a little hole into where you want your magnet to go and I advise advise using super glue to stick it down then have your connecting piece and then also line that up where you want it to be make sure that you have the right sides facing each other so that when you connect them they'll actually stick so again with the foam board you can just like prod it and make a little indentation and then what I like to do is use a knife or a drill, anything you have on hand just to make that hole bigger. And I try not to push through onto the other side, but if you do push through the other side, if you're gonna be decorating both sides, you can just cover that up with wallpaper. Then we're gonna put the magnet into the other hole that we've just made. And then voila, here is what we're gonna to use to connect our room. So I've started with my floorboard and I've added magnets all around the outer edges of my floorboard because this for me on this particular piece is where I want my magnets to be and I'll show you on the other wall where I want the magnets to be it just preference you could put them on top depending on how you want your walls to sit but mine are on the outer edges and for my window I have them on the inside so that when they connect up to the floor it's just going to be a simple snap together so I have it along both the edges and I also have it going along the top as well for the roof. So you can see that just snaps into place. And again, with my back wall, I have it going along the top and the outer edges. So it just depends on how you want your room box to snap together, where you want your pieces. And just make sure that you leave an even gap between each magnet so that they all line up. You definitely wanna make sure that they line up correctly and you have the right sides facing each other to get a snap. So just take your time with this process. And again, with the second wall, I have my magnets going along the inner sides and for the roof going along the top. And there they just snaps together and it's really as simple as that. So this room can be changed into anything. I have the roof on top that I can take off and remove and completely fold away. So now I'm going to show you how I decorate this room box and how it can be used in different ways with different flooring. 
first I'm going to start with my window and just some trimming. I'm going to use some balsa wood to get my actual trimming for the window and I wanted to make this window with the option of removing it also. If you remember my very first video on this channel I did a mock-up room box so this is basically I would say the more advanced version and more usable version I think of that one. So we slice up the balsa wood to get the trimming for our window and then we just make sure that that's all lined up and it fits perfectly and then we have the trimming that goes all the way around. So with this window I want to make it a window that can open and shut so we're going to get all our pieces and just stick those all around. Once the frame is done, I'm then going to use a wooden dowel to make the support beam for the middle and I'm going to glue it together using my wood glue, but not gluing it to the actual frame itself. So it looks something like this. I'm going to let that set and dry in place and then we can remove it to do the rest of the window. But before we do that, I'm also going to line up the pieces that I'll need to actually make the, the window frame and the pane itself. Just using some coffee stirrers, I'm going to measure this up, um, just kind of eyeballing and measuring it. I haven't got any specific measurements for the actual pane itself, but I'm just going to line this up and then trim them and get those all lined up so that we can put them onto our plastic for the windows so here's the frame all nice and dry and set and now here are the pieces for our window pane and as I said I want this to open so I'm going to use the coffee stirrer pieces as the frame that will open and close our window so I'm going to line these up with the frame and then I'm also going to get those glued and stuck together and then I'm going to use some pins that I've got. I'm going to leave a link in the description, as I said before, for everything that I'm going to be using. But these pins right here is what I'm going to use as my hinge, so to speak, to kind of drill through. And that's where the windows will be opening and closing. If you see like this, it's going to go through the frame and through the pane of the window. <laughs> and then add some coffee stirrers to a piece of plastic that measures to the size that you want your window pane to be. And then I just stick them all together. And this is kind of what it looks like and it pops open quite nicely. I'm going to show you what it looks like here before I connect it. So you see the frame has got the hole in it there. The hole has also been drilled on the outer frame as well because that's what we're going to be putting our pins through so that it opens and closes. So here this is how it will sit in place with the pins go through the top and bottom. I'm going to use some coffee stirrers as well to clean up the actual window pane. Obviously, when it comes to the window pane, it's your style, however you want to do it. This is kind of the style that I was going for. I wanted to go for a kind of a modern window that I think is quite chic and universal, so I can use it in many different rooms and styles. But at this point, it's completely your choice how you do your windows. But I did actually find these really cute little hooks or beads or I'm not sure what they are they were in my daughter's stash and I was like okay I'm taking those I see modern window handles and I need them <laughs> so you see they open really well but I will sand it down just a little bit because you can see one of the sides there's just a little bit of um, overlap with some of the plastic in the wood so just sand that down just make sure everything's smooth and it can open and close just as you want or you can have a completely still window that doesn't move and this is the stage where you can either stick it into your original wall frame or you can have it as a removable window. So this is the stage where you can decide, you know what, I'm gonna swap my window. I don't want it to open for this style of room that I'm doing. And I just like the idea of being able to chop and change your rooms and put them away when you finish with them. So here it is in the wall. Now it's time for some painting and sealing. <laughs> so I'm gonna seal the plastic um, note to speak future self when i'm doing windows i think i'm gonna paint everything before i start because i really don't like the finicky task of trying to protect my actual window pane it is such a pain but when if you are doing this just take your time and make sure that you have it covered as best you can and um, so it looks like this i mean it's not such a big deal but i think you know if you have everything painted in advance especially if you're using balsa wood see i'm going to seal this now i don't need to do it with the coffee stirrers but with the balsa wood especially it likes to warp i have discovered it warps a lot <laughs> so 
future me, remember balsa wood, either at least seal it. If you're not going to paint it, seal it before you start crafting and doing your thing. So I'm going to be painting mine all black because I feel like it will go well and it's for the style of rooms that I want to build in my modern empire black just works well i may do another one of these in white as well if i do want to chop and change but yes so now i'm just going to paint the whole thing black and there we have it it's looking good this is just the first coat and you can see on the inside i need to put a frame around the paint on the inside so when you open the window you're not just hit with a completely different color so i'm going to go around all of this and just add the inner frame as well i got the memo this time and painted all my coffee sticks before putting them down i also just want to show you quickly that this is um really simple to pop out you just push it from the back if you're using foam board remember just to be a little bit gentle you don't want to snap your foam board but there you have it you can pop the window out and it's really really easy to just slide back in but for the sake of this room i know i'm going to be keeping this window so eventually i will be sticking this down so with everything painted and dried it's time for me to add my beautiful little handles so i'm just going to make sure that it's going to be lined up exactly where i want it to so i'm just going to line up here make sure it's an equal gap in between because the last thing we want on our windows is some wonky handles so i'm going to just use this handheld drill and you get so many tiny little um, drill bits with it it's really really cool so i'm just going to use this to punch a hole in where i want my little handles to go and i'll do this on both sides my handles are nice and secure and in place you could just simply open and shut them i use some super glue to secure them onto the actual window frame as well so they will not be coming off anytime soon so to clean it up i'm going to add some more of my extra coffee stirrer sticks to cover up the gap where you would see the connection for the handle and it just happens to work out perfectly that this was the style and it fit in really nice so there we have our window nice and complete and we could just pop that back into our open wall. Like I said before, I'm going to actually glue this in place because I think this is a window that I'll use more often. And there you have it. They open and close really nicely and I am super happy with this. So if you remember in my first mock-up video, I showed you how to make removable curtains. So here is going to be another way of making removable curtains. This time we're not going to be using any Madnux. We're going to be using the good old fashioned hook with loops technique. So I'm going to use a bamboo skewer to as my rods. I'm just going to measure this up and I want to make sure that I have enough space or a overhang for the window so we have uh, enough space to kind of open the curtains back if we want to. Later on I do slightly change some of the placements of things but you'll see that. But the general idea is that you want your bamboo stick or your rod for your curtains to be long enough and have a long enough overhang so you've got some space to open and close your curtains. As we know guys I try my best to make things that are removable and usable because I like to change things. I've discovered that I can't stay at one thing for a long time so I just want to share those ideas with you guys so here is the rod i've just marked up exactly where the middle is and where i want the end as i say i do extend this a little bit later on but now i'm just showing you the general idea of how to make your rod with your removable curtains i'm just using some scissors here to make a little indentation in the rod so i know where my points are my middle and my end points so when i paint over it i can see where i want my hooks to lay so i'm just going to be painting this over with some lamp black nothing fancy now i make the hook for the rod to sit in i just use a little piece of balsa wood and some wire and kind of cut it into a nice little fancy shape i've kind of got a template drawn on my cardboard here and i just shape the wire to the same as my little template here so you can see i just have some balsa wood and i've used super glue to attach the wire to it i'm going to paint this black and then i'll stick that onto the wall where i want my rod to be so you can see here the rod will sit inside the hook like this so if you wanted to take the rod off you can you simply just 
pop it off change your curtains and voila we've got another way of moving things around the room like i said earlier i end up changing things just a little bit because the placement of my hooks it's too close to the window so when i put the curtains on right now you can see it's too close so i'm going to change that so that my hooks are going to be at the end but this is the general idea you want it stuck on and then you can just take the rod off simply just like this just slip it on just clip it down and clip it off and this is just testing but there you have it and you can just pop it off anytime you want to change your curtains and so to make the curtains i've got some really nice linen fabric i've cut it to the length of the whole window and then i've just used some multi fabric sew glue it's really good to kind of tidy up the edges you can also use a sewing machine which i do a little bit later on to kind of get some of my folds just practicing because i really want to start using my sewing machine i've had it but i don't really use it but as you can see for one side of the curtain it's the full length of the rod so that when we're folding it over we've got nice you know some nice seams and pleats going along so what you want is when you fold your curtain in half that it meets in the middle point of your rod or your hook and then you want to make sure that you've got enough length that it hits the floor because a nice set of curtains are ones that hit the floor you know what I mean guys we don't want those half boot cut <laughs> kind of curtains um, so yeah just make sure you've got the size that you want here I'm going to just show you a technique if you want to have your curtains go through the rod you just simply take Take your rod and fold your cloth or your material over the rod and that's where you would sew give yourself enough space to kind of weave the curtain through it once you've added your pleats and whatnot so you just simply sew along this line and then you've got an option to kind of put your rod through here i always like options so here is one of them and the second option is having tabs to put through your hook so you cut little strips and you fold them either sew them and glue them in half like this and this is what's going to go on the back of your curtains and thread through the rod so this kind of looks really nice and authentic like this so i did use my sewing machine it, <laughs> I might start using it for sure this is kind of how it's going to turn out i'm going to show you how we did it but you just simply have your tabs and then you just put your rod through the tabs so what i'm going to do now is measure out where i want my pleats to go you want your pleats equal so i'm just going to measure along half an inch on the top and bottom and then because this is going to be the inside of my curtain you won't see the pencil line and just line them up um, so you've got equal size pleats you do want them to look clean and as neat and realistic as possible and i found that this is the best way to do it so for this part you're going to need your no sew glue a foam mat like this green one you can see here and an iron so this is what i use to actually putting the curtains together so i'm going to use my fabric glue to put along the seams or the hem of the curtain again you could sew this but why <laughs> why when we've got stuff like this it's absolutely fabulous so i'm just going to add a small bit at the bottom for the hem and then fold this over and let it set and dry i also use the iron as well to help this process along just some of the heat helps the fibers kind of fuse together so now i fold over my seam lines making sure they're lined up to the pencil lines that i already drew and then just use my iron to get the pleats set in place just really simply like this and we're going to do it kind of in a fan motion working on the two ends first because we want them to connect together once they're on the rod so they're not kind of uneven so we do the two ends first use the iron and then we're going to do like a fan back and forth motion so we we've got the pleats simply just like this so now with some nice crisp pleat lines we can add the tabs to the top so all you need to do is just open this up and then with the tabs in the middle of the creases like this so i'm going to use the fabric glue as well but again you can sew this on if you'd prefer for more stability and security so you can see in between the little ridges here we've got these little grooves if you like this is where we're going to be putting the tabs you just simply open it up and in between each little groove is where you want to put the tab you can fold the tab in half as well if you like 
for it to sit a little bit more secure and then we're just going to use some fabric glue and stick the tabs along the back so here we go just a little bit of fabric glue there and then we could just put fabric glue all along the little middle grooves so not the outer pieces but the little valleys if you like we're just going to put some in there and that's where we're going to be putting our tabs so we're just going to stick these all along the edge and then just let them set and dry before we can actually use them i like to give everything a final press again to fuse it again and to let it set and make sure that it's all clean then i use some little cutters to cut off any extra threads or pieces that i don't think look really neat and just get those trimmed up and looking good and ready to go and with that done we can now add our curtains to our rod so you could make a million of these curtains and change them up anytime you like because it's really simple and now that on the rod we can add them to the hooks that we made earlier now it's time for some removable flooring number one so i used some vinyl flooring sheets the adhesive ones and i stuck them onto some amazon packaging i just cut them into little flooring strips and then stuck them on to the amazon packaging again so now you can just slide this into the room slide it out if you don't need it anymore or you can use some putty or double-sided tape and then you can just remove it whenever you want flooring number two will be coming up soon but first i'm going to be using some balsa wood and i'm going to seal it with some pva glue and some water because i have learned from my mistakes guys i have learned before i use balsa wood i must seal it's absolutely crazy how much it warps so i seal one side let it dry and then seal the other side and i'm going to be using both of these for some flooring and some wall paneling so while that dries i'm going to show you some techniques for removable wallpaper so this wallpaper is what I call my charcoal texture wallpaper. It's available to print from my Etsy store. I will leave a link in the description, but I wanted to show you how you can take any wallpaper and kind of change it and modernize it. So I'm going to be using some mirrored adhesive paper or strips to kind of change this wallpaper into something a little bit more modern. So if you wanted to make an office or a really fancy room, you don't have to use the wallpaper as is. We're going to, what I'm going to do is cut this up into little strips this um, mirrored paper and just show you how you can take any paper any wallpaper and make it removable and reusable so i will be using a cereal box but for now i'm just going to stick it down with a little bit of masking tape so that i can get my design so to do this design i'm going to cut it to size so it fits on the cereal box as you can see this is oreos <laughs> and um, i'm going to trim this right down to size then i'm going to cut up some of my mirror adhesive paper and i'm going to be sticking this on the cereal box to form a nice design so i'll show you what i mean i'm going to just be cutting out the wallpaper so for this design i kind of wanted to go with something kind of abstract and modern so i'm going to cut out little strip chunks from the paper and then that's where i'm going to add my mirror so the wallpaper is going to kind of have a mirror effect on it so i'm going to cut out some chunks like this all along and you know sometimes you've got to wing it and go for it and i tend to do that and my brain's like am i really doing the right thing <laughs> In the end, I'm generally happy with how it is. So I'm going to go across the whole paper, just making rectangular strips like this. So once that's done, I'll be reconnecting it back to the cereal box, but with the mirror effect underneath. If I had a large sheet of mirror, I could have just like stuck that underneath, but I didn't really want to waste material because I might need little strips here and there. So what I do is cut a little bit of uh, the strips slightly larger than the strips that I've cut on the paper and then I'm going to stick those down so it looks something like this and then I'm going to go ahead and then glue it down as I go so I'm going to glue a section add a section glue a section add a section I hope that makes sense as I said this is just my own unique way of creating different wallpaper and um, just to funky it up a little bit so I've got larger chunks as well so i'll take a larger slice of the mirror paper and then i'm going to stick that underneath and then just keep following the pattern along until i have a nice full pattern i'm just gluing as i go 
and this is the final result i am so happy with how, how this turned out guys i'm not gonna lie so now let's just do a quick test and see how the room would work so we've got the floor with the magnets we've got our back wall we've got our wall with the curtain and window got our side wall and now I'm going to show you an example of how the removable wallpaper and flooring would work. So this one is what we have stuck to our cereal box. We simply can slide that down because it is made to fit or we can, for extra security, we can add double sided tape. You can see we've got a little white trim at the bottom from the skirting as well. And then we've got our flooring that we made on the Amazon <laughs> packaging box. So we can simply just slide that into the room because everything has been made to fit. And and now we have ourselves a fancy little office if you like and to remove it we just simply take it off add a bit of paneling and I want to show you something unique and different with this as well a different way of changing up the room completely so you can remove everything take it all apart when you're done and put it away I played around with some wood stained textures here for another flooring design and I like this one up at the top because I think it's going to match the curtains for this room so I'm going to show you some more flooring styles that you can use and just how you can have a few of them laying around anytime you want to change a room and look we can just pull this apart whenever you want so the balsa wood that we sealed earlier is now ready to paint and i'm going to be using this antique pine i've actually got a set of tester paints they're all really really good i got them from amazon i will leave a link in this description for them as well they're really really good so i'm just going to go ahead and give this a double cone of this paint and then show you how i make my second style of flooring so with that done i'm just going to let it set and dry you can see it's got a nice little gloss to it i'm going to let it dry in the meantime i'm going to make myself a couple of rugs i'm going to make a nice cream punch needle rug hmm. so with my wood now dry i'm just going to first line it you can see i've got the right amount of distance in between and then i'm just going to cut this up into strips and just make sure they're as even as possible roughly three and three quarter inch size strips is what i want and then i'm going to just stick them together again on another cereal box or packaging paper anything you've got lying around just so that you can stick it on and remove it anytime you want so here you have two different styles of flooring and the reason I like to do it like this I feel like it's more defined than just having one sheet so if I'm using a printable or anything like that I do like to slice it up or score it just so you can still get a little bit more realism and texture so it looks like this. So we've had removable flooring on a cereal box on packaging and now I'm going to do it on a grey craft board and this again is a great technique using things that you have around your house to make some awesome flooring so i'm going to give you three styles of flooring today guys that is all going to be removable and changeable i just love it so again i'm just going to line up the flooring how i want you could choose any design that you want that's the fun part about making your own flooring and with the great craft board i feel like you can get a little bit more creative with it as well because it's quite durable so again i'm just going to do a simple i guess it's called like brick layer flooring for this i'm going to draw out my lines and the sections that i need then i'm just going to use my pencil and draw in all the details that you'll normally find on wood planks you know the bolts the squiggles the lines then i'm going to use my exacto blade to kind of of scoring any indentations and kind of make any of the score lines that we need to make it look more wood like <laughs> this did take a little while i'm not gonna lie but it's totally worth it at the end once you see all the textures come together i even used my little drill bit to simulate the the holes where the nails would be i think when I'm doing a non mock up room, I would use this technique and actually put nails in it as well for more of that authenticity. But because this is something I'm going to be removing and changing around, I didn't need to do that. So I'm going to mix the, together some burnt umber and lamp black to make my flooring. I'm going to go for a really nice dark tone as well. I've used this technique before in my, was it my Halloween video? I think it was my Halloween. Could have been my Christmas 
one of those videos. I'll leave a link in the description when I remember which one. <laughs> so then I'm going to go ahead and just paint all of this and then using my usual technique of painting and wiping off with paper just so that it brings in all of the details that we got before. I like the dark color. It's dark now, but it does dry lighter and I do give it another light tone as well. So here is going to be another tone and because I've scored over all of the lines as well then it stops this warping and it sits really nice and flat. So then I go over this with a layer of just burnt umber by itself. Let me just show you here and then just paint that on and again I'm going to wipe that off as well so we've got some of the dark tones underneath with the lighter tones on top and when this dries and set it comes out a really nice colour which I personally like I think it gives them a kind of rich look to a room just my personal preference you could either go on over this with a nice kind of shiny gloss or whatever you've got as well so I'm going to do this for the full piece of the board whilst that dries and set I'm going to work on the final back wall panel so what I do using my foam board I just mark up where I want my design to go so this is just a random design that I've come up with I want some nice strip paneling in the middle and I want the two side strips to be a different color so I'm just going to show you how I do that I'm just marking out now where I actually want my side panels to be and using the balsa wood that we sealed earlier this is what I'm going to use for my paneling strips so I'm just going to mark up where I want to cut this always leaving a gap at the bottom so the magnets can still connect to the floor panel so now I'm going to be cutting these into tiny strips so they represent some kind of panel so as you can see here I just mark out how thick that you want your panels if you're trying this yourself and then just using your ruler and an exacto blade or whatever cutting so you're using we can just slice through this and cut all of these strips I won't actually need all of the strips for what I'm doing but they will be good for future projects so once these are all cut I'm just going to cut them all now really nice and simple and balsa wood is so soft and as long as you go with the grain it's really simple again I'm going to be using some cereal box this is what I'm going to use as my removable piece that I will be attaching to the wall and taking off anytime I need to I'm just making sure that it lines up exactly where I want it to and then I'm going to be painting this black because this is the style that I want for my particular thing magic now that my cereal box is painted black I'm going to add the strips to the box so what I do I take one strip where I want it to be and then I'm going to have another strip as my guidelines for the gaps that I want in between so just like this you place down the strip so this is where our first piece will be stick that down then we get a second piece and put that in between and that is going to be our guided piece so we have equal gaps in between each of our paneling strips so like this then we glue it down then we add another piece Then continue across the panel until you've got something like this and then paint it all black or your color of choice. Once that dries, you can add some double sided tape and then stick it to your room in your selected position just like this. So now you can add anything you want to the side pieces or just leave it white. It's up to you. But I'm going to show you what I do using some great craft board. I just paint it in the same way that I painted the floor in. I'm going to use double sided tape to stick those to the side to make a really modern type of wall that you can peel off and change whenever you like so as long as you've got double-sided tape putty masking tape whatever you want you can use that to stick these side panels on and then it's really really simple stick it make sure that you leave it above the magnets as well because we do still need to connect the wall and you just simply stick it down like this and you're ready to go we have another style of wallpaper or wall paneling so now we can go ahead and mix and match our rooms and create any style we want so we've got three different types of flooring that can be removed we've also got the two styles of wallpaper or wall paneling and the world is your oyster at this point so now i can peel everything off of the wall and change it if i want at any time so i'm going to just show you a few examples of how the room can look so remember this could be a bedroom a kitchen an office 
anything you want and just have fun with it. I'm going to just show you some pictures now of some of the styles that I came up with of making living rooms, but you can go to town with this and I hope you found this really useful. I hope you enjoyed that and if you want to see some more removable reusable stuff stay tuned for my next video where I show you how to make these hanging plants that you can move and if there's anything else that you'd like to see me create let me know in the comments and you can also check out my Etsy store if there's any printables that you might be interested in or home decor items. I'll also leave a link for my Patreon to anyone who wants to show some support over there I really appreciate you all and then for my tier twos there are some cutting list for my sofas and armchairs so guys there you have it there is your mock-up prototype room that you can use in many different ways i hope you really enjoyed that and you got some value out of it and like i said stay tuned for my next video where i show you how to make removable hanging plants with the basket so stay tuned and i hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you in my next video bye, -bye. like share subscribe